Well, British astronomer and TV presenter Sir Patrick Moore has died. He was 89. The astronomer presented the BBC program The Sky at Night for over 50 years, making him the longest running host of a television show. For more, another astronomer, Fred Watson, joins me in the studio. Fred Watson works at the Australian Astronomical, Astronomical Observatory, but he grew up in the UK. Fred Watson, welcome. Thank what you. did Sir Patrick Moore mean to you? Well, like uh, many of my generation in the UK, he was an inspiration. Uh, his uh, show started in 1957. We used to stay up late to watch it on TV in uh, flaky black and white. And he, um, he, he brought astronomy to a very, very wide public and, and has done it, as you said, for over 50 mm. years. Would you be an astronomer if it, if it weren't for him? Actually, it's a really good question and I doubt I would because I can remember uh, an eclipse that he commentated on uh, early in 1961 uh, and... and Actually, the eclipse was clouded out, so Patrick just talked about the it was weather. Li it was live TV. Live TV, yeah. yeah. And, and I thought after that, that's what I want to do. <laughs> I want to be an astronomer. <laughs> when did you first become aware of him? Uh, round about the time his, his programme started, in the, in the late 50s. It was a very heady time for, for science and astronomy in particular, with the, the launch of Sputnik 1 in uh, 1957. Sky at Night started in 1957. A very well-known science magazine, still going, started in 1957. And so, you know, all of us were really captivated by this idea of space travel mm. and astronomy. Um, I, I guess it was very common among school children of the, e of the era. But as time went on, you know, my peers became engineers and doctors and other sensible things. And I never really, never really grew up. What made him so attractive to you? Um, I, I suppose the knowledgeability, uh, but... Uh, coupled with humility, uh, as I found out when I got to know him personally later, you'd sort of say, you know, congratulatory things to Sir Patrick, and he'd say, no, look, I did nothing. All I did was acted as a conduit to, to bring the research that, uh, that other people are doing to a much wider public. And he did very, that very so humble. well. He did indeed, mm. that's right. And he, he wasn't professionally trained? No, he wasn't. Actually, he, um, he was a navigator in the RAF during the Second World War, and at the end of that, I think, did a pilot run with the BBC for a show that was supposed to last six weeks or something like that because he was passionate, mm -hmm. absolutely passionate about astronomy. And in particular, did um, fundamental work on mapping the moon. You know, it was very unpopular in those days to, to actually map our nearest neighbour in space. But Patrick, I think, recognised that that was about to become a target for space exploration and he was fascinated by and, the place. And I find it extraordinary that even though he wasn't professionally trained, the work that he did on that was used by the, the Americans and the that's Russians. That's right. Yes, that's right. It was, uh, and it's because the professionals at that time were more interested in the stars, in galaxies, in all these things that are part of our stock of trade, stocking trade of astronomy. And the moon was really not, you know, it was a bit boring, really. Yeah. Uh, Apart from that moment where there was the eclipse and it was clouded over and he still worked with it, can you remember any specific moments uh, when, he, the, when he was broadcasting the, that you were watching? Yeah, there's a classic which is very famous in the annals of BBC television, and I did see this. And once again, Patrick was going live to air as he often did and a fly flew into his mouth <laughs> while he was talking and he swallowed it you know it didn't didn't actually didn't bat an eyelid the yeah. fly went in and it never came out and, well that was one of his characteristics as well was this uh, his uh, verbal approach he yes. had this kind of scattergun he did he had a, a, a machine gun delivery that's right, <laughs> right. Uh, you know he packed a huge amount of information into really a, a fairly modest number of words but in a very <laughs> short time yeah I, I read something today saying he could uh, there, there was no auto cue or anything like that. He could no. speak for 25 minutes straight yeah. to camera about, uh, about that, an item. That's quite right. And I remember being impressed by exactly that once I was actually kind of assisting him at the Royal Greenwich Observatory, which in those days was in deepest Suff Sussex in the UK. He'd come down to record a broadcast and I was sort of helping him out. And I was staggered by the fact that he could simply deliver to camera uh, the lines, word perfect. He might not be quite happy about something, so he'd do it again. Exactly the same thing, but with perhaps a few changes that would have, you know, that would have improved it. So you're actually his assistant for a period. No, where only you're... Um, I, I was uh, being, you know, as a staff member of the Royal Observatory. But because yeah. I'd worked with him on a number of occasions, they used to kind of bring me along to to, to, to look after him if he was visiting yeah. one of the Royal Observatories. He was quite a large man, and he had that yeah. monocle. Uh, yes. When did he start wearing the monocle? Uh, he, was that he, only later? No, no, he wore that from the word go. Oh. And, and I think he kind of found it in a junk shop somewhere <laughs> in, in about 19. 
1946 and thought, oh, and, this, and here we see him. I think this is in his backyard, or one of those shots was in his backyard. I don't know if you ever got to see his backyard. Yes, I did yeah. many times. Yeah. <laughs> he had a, he had a, a few uh, yeah. astronomical devices there in the backyard, and here we can see him. He was a passionate xylo xylophonist, indeed. That, yeah, and he wrote an opera. Uh, wow. As well as playing the xylophone, this is this is uh, vintage Patrick. Is this? This is exactly <laughs> how we all remember him. And I think if we wait, we'll see his flare at the end. Absolutely, <laughs> there, there it is. Way to go, Patrick. Now he he only <laughs> ever missed one show too, apparently over the years. It was I think like that's dedicated. right. Yes, and I, I, I mean on a number of occasions he kind of got up from his sickbed to, to broadcast. Uh, it, latterly, what happened was that the BBC went to him down in, Su in Sussex rather than him coming up to Broadcasting House. Mm. But he, he worked with a succession of really talented BBC producers who all spoke of him with very great affection. Mm. And uh, I know he was interviewed in the last couple of weeks and he was very excited about um, this century and the, the prospects for this century. And in particular, he was saying that the first person to walk on Mars has probably already been, been born. born. I'm sure that's true. Mm. Yeah, I, you know, he, he, he looked into the future. He saw an excitement uh, about astronomy and space science that I have to say I feel too because there's so much mm. great stuff going on at the moment. And yeah. he, he got excited as well. Are you, are you glad that he inspired you into this uh, profession? Yeah, look, I... I I, I, I became useless to society years and years ago because of my astronomical endeavours. But I wouldn't have done anything else, yes, I can tell you. Well, why, why is it so important for us and, and important for humanity to have pe people passionate about this I, subject? I think um, astronomy is such a great way of switching kids onto science. Um, you know, just the fact that nothing inspires kids like black holes or killer asteroids or death of the dinosaurs by asteroids, things of that sort. It's a very easy way to engage people with science. And a lot of the concepts are really easy to get your head around, unlike nuclear physics or, or biochemistry. Mm. So uh, I think it's a fantastic vehicle for engaging youngsters. And of course, we need all the scientists and technologists we can get. We're living in an increasingly technological society. Are you going to uh, look up at the stars tonight and give him a nod? I, I will indeed, yeah. I'll drink to his health if I get a chance. <laughs> okay, Fred Watson, thanks so much for coming in and keep up the good work. Great pleasure, Joe. Thanks very much. Cheers.